So this is my new off-grid solar power system that's easy to build for beginners and it's easy to expand and for quite a few reasons that we're going to go over. So first off, we have the 6000 XP by EG4 and it has a split phase output. And what that means is it does 120, 240 volts on its own. So if you want to make your system bigger, you can just throw another one on the wall or three or four and then connect them all together easily with a load center that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. On previous types of systems, the AC output was in series. So you'd have to either have two units because they'd be single phase 120. And so you'd have to have two of them to make a split phase output. And then if you wanted to expand your system, you'd have to have either two, four or six. With this one, you can have one, two, three, or four, or anything that is required to run your loads. And that makes a big difference when you're trying to scale your system and trying to save money. Also, this has an integrated DC and AC breaker, which costs a lot of money, and you have to wire those all up on the older models. So previously, you'd have to put a T-class fuse, a bus bar down here, but now it's all integrated. So if you wanna add more to your system, you just throw another one on your wall. Also, they're lightweight, so all of this is actually connected to drywall anchors and you can mount them wherever you wish. Because the 18K is a lot heavier and if you're putting a PowerPro battery in an 18K, you're gonna have to plan where the studs are and place it in that spot. With this system, you can just throw these on the wall because they're so lightweight and expand your system to any size. You can run a house, you can run multiple houses, you can run pretty much anything you wish with these units. Next, they have a different communication system compared to the older models. These do not use ser serial communication. They just have a single cable right here. And if you have only two of them, you only need one cable. And the setup is very easy. And I'll show you on the screen what you need to do. Also, when you connect the solar previously, you'd have to add your own disconnect, but this one actually has it built in. So you can run conduit with PV conductors straight into this unit safely. And it also has GFCI and AFCI for that input. So overall, very simple. It has everything in these boxes. You can throw some batteries on the ground, run some conduit from some PV conductors with an array outside. You could even throw some solar panels on your ground like I do all the time. And then you use this as the combiner box. And for each unit, we have a 40 amp breaker. So this is inverter number one and inverter number two. This is hot one and hot one supplying one bus bar, and then hot two and hot two supplying the other bus bar. And then we have a disconnect. This runs over to the other panel. And this is our load center. So this is where we connect an EV charger and some 20 amp outlets. Instead of having this load center, you can actually be running a critical loads panel through a transfer switch or an entire homes panel if you have enough units to run it. For some of you, you might wanna just have all the inverters on this side and all of your loads on this side if you're off-grid only and you're trying to run a cabin and you don't wanna run two panels. But I think this is really good for beginners to have a combiner box because these are only like $45 and then have a load center. I like the organization. All I did is connect it with some electrical conduit and it works. It looks nice and it's easy to add more in the future. But this is probably overkill. You could use a smaller load center to connect your inverters and then have a larger load center for running a house or a cabin. So yeah, I made them the same size because this is what I had available. But yeah, you can make it any size you wish to work for your system. But always have an extra two slots or more just in case. Now something I noticed with this system is that when and these are in parallel, the surge capacity is really good. So we're gonna connect my car lift to a single leg of these inverters and show you how well it performs. So here's an extension cord connected to my car lift. Let's turn it on. Now I want you guys to hear this motor. Previously, when we ran off a single motor, it made all sorts of crazy noises. And that's pretty typical when you have an undersized inverter. But the sound that this motor makes is very similar to the 18K. So listen to this. Oh, whoops, is it not on? breaker was off. Okay, listen to this motor. 
That's perfect. That's how it's supposed to sound. And that's how it sounds with the grid and the 18K, but not with a single unit. When you have two of them in parallel, the surge capacity is phenomenal. Now, another test I did is I took the EV charger and I put an 8,000 watt load on these inverters. And then I ran an inductive load, this car lift, with a car on the car lift, and it ran it perfectly. So if you're considering an 18K, but you don't need the grid interactive features, and you're wondering about the surge capabilities of these units, you would save a ton of money, like over a thousand, maybe two thousand dollars by just buying these. And these are easier to install and set up, but it really depends on your situation. But yeah, the surge capacity when this thing is under load is really good. Now we're going to shut these down and we're going to take these covers off and I'll show you how I wired them up. Now first you want to connect the battery, so you want to flip these breakers off, and I'm using 2 watt gauge cable. This is overkill, but I like to overkill my battery conductor size. Next we have a communication cable, and because we only have two units in parallel, we only need a single cable. But if you have three or four, you're going to have to use more cables, and you're going to have to connect them in different spots. And there's also some DIP switches right here and right here, and you'll have to read the manual on how you have to set that up. But for two units, it's very simple. These DIP switches are both up, and both of these DIP switches are up, and then this cable is connected to the far right port, and this one is connected in the middle port. Now let's talk about the grid connection. Do not do what I'm doing here. I have this outlet, and I wanted to connect it to a 650P, but this is not recommended. I paralleled these conductors in the terminal, and I don't want you guys doing that. You wanna run your own conduit and conductors if you're using the grid, and both units, all the units in your system, have to be connected to grid together. But if you're using it for off-grid, you can ignore this part, or if you want it super simple, you can buy a 48 volt battery charger and charge your battery bank off of that if you don't need all of them charging at the same time and that's overkill or if you don't have a supply that's that large and you have a lot of these on your wall and you want a hardwired connection I'm using this outlet because I have to use this for other things this connects to the 18k but it works really well and I limited the current so I can run this all day long and it's all rated properly. So this does actually work really well. Now let's talk about the AC output. So we have a hot one, a hot two, and a hot one and a hot two. So we need to combine these over here in this panel. Because they're in parallel, hot ones need to connect to one bus bar and hot twos need to connect to the other bus bar. So for load one, we're using a black conductor, and load two, we're using a red conductor. And then we're also running a neutral to the neutral bar, and then a ground to this ground conductor. Over here, we have a black on the left, a red on the right, and we have a white going to the neutral bar, and a green going to the ground bar. And this is the combiner box, so the inverters connect with the flexible conduit right here and right here. And each inverter supplies a circuit breaker, and this is a 40 amp. So each one is gonna have a hot one and a hot two, and a hot one and a hot two. So that means that the reds are in parallel with one bus bar, and the blacks are in parallel with the other bus bar. Now the neutrals and the grounds need to be separated with this system. These inverters have their own ground neutral bond relay, and what that means is that depending on the situation, it will create a bond where it's necessary. But if it doesn't need it, in the case of a pass-through, that's a feature that these have if you're connected to the grid and it wants to power the loads and there's no more battery power or solar power, it will pass through the power from the grid. And in that situation, you want to keep the neutrals and the ground separate. So you have to install your own ground bus bar for the ground conductors. And these are very easy to install and you can find them at Home Depot or Lowe's. So the whites from the inverter go to the neutral bus bar and then the greens or the grounds go down here to this ground bus bar. Now I'm using this load center for connecting multiple inverters, but that's not the case for everyone. Some of you guys will only have a single panel and you can put all of your inverters on this side and you can put all of your loads on this side. Or if you will not expand your system in the future, you could just have two inverters here and then put load circuit breakers up here and you can easily power your loads no problem in that configuration. 
But in this system, because I'm using it as a combiner box, I bought a load center with a main breaker. And this switches power for the whole panel. And I can take the power from all of the inverters on this bus bar and shoot that out somewhere else to a critical loads panel, to a whole house panel, or whatever I want to power. So I added these conductors down here, and these are six gauge, and this is perfect for having two inverters. But if you have four inverters or eight inverters, you're gonna have to size these accordingly because if you undersize them, they will melt and you will have issues. So we have a hot one, a hot two, and we have a neutral right here, and this is shooting over to our load center on the other side. And we're running the ground separate, so we have a ground bar over here, and we have a ground bar over here, and they're connected with their own dedicated conductor. And then we have a hot one, hot two, and a neutral supplying this load center. And this is overkill with having another main breaker, but I really like having these, especially if I'm working on the system. Because let's say I wanna work on a load circuit, I can flip this off and then I can work on this panel. Let's say I'm working on an inverter, I can shut it down and isolate it from the bus bar. And then I can swap out an inverter or add more inverters. And these load centers are pretty cheap, so try them out. They're pretty useful for designing large systems. But on both panels, we're separating the grounds and the neutrals and we're running our own ground conductor and that's non-current carrying and you have to do that. So all the neutrals connect right here, the grounds connect right here, and then the hots for the loads connect right here. Also, the color coordination is not correct on this one. This one should be red, but I didn't have any and we don't have any at our store right now. We're actually all out. So yeah, this one should be red and I need to tape it. But all the whites are connected to the neutrals except for this one, and then all the hots are connected right here. But yeah, keep the neutrals and the ground separate with the 6000 XP. Now previously, I would recommend having a ground neutral bond in the combiner box, but not with these units. These have their own ground neutral relay and the software will control when it needs it and where. So do not add your own ground neutral bond in any of these panels. Keep the grounds and the neutral separate like a sub panel. And that will enable safe use of pass through function. Because if you were to create a bond in this panel and then you have a pass through from your house's panel that has its own bond, you're gonna create a ground loop. And that's not good for a multitude of reasons, especially depending on where you live, you could cause damage to some of these circuits. So you don't want any ground loops in your system. Now, if you're not comfortable with this type of stuff, you can always have an electrician do it. You can easily mount these 6,000 XP's to a wall and connect them to a battery yourself. But if you're scared to mess this stuff up, hire a professional. Now that everything's wired, let's talk about the programming. All you have to do is change a couple settings on the 6000 XP and they will be in sync so you can run loads together and you can double your output capacity. So first hold down enter until you reach the settings. Go down to setting number 21 and then press enter. You wanna select one pH, and then press enter, and then P1 and then press enter and then battery share, because they're all connected to the same battery, you want to enable it. It comes disabled, but make sure that you enable that and then press enter and that's it. Press return and you're good. Oh, and it will flash. That means that it updated the settings. Now, after you've programmed both of them, you should also connect the app and make sure the settings are correct on there. So each one has their own Wi-Fi dongle, hook it up and you can change all the settings very quickly on the app. Now you'll need to test if the output is correct and they are in sync. So turn the load breaker on and then go over here and turn these on and then turn the inverter on last and then you'll hear them click. We've got 240 volts and then to neutral 120. 120, so these are phased correctly. And make sure you're not getting any error codes. That would also mean that it's not communicating correctly as well. And that's it, now I can connect the loads and turn them on. Everything is functioning how it should. I tried this on the first try and it worked perfectly, so I don't think you guys are gonna have any issues with this. But you might have issues with putting these communication cables in because if you have four of them, you have to use like four cables in a special configuration. So be sure to read the manual for that step. But if you follow the instructions, it should work very easily. There's nothing else you have to set up. I was actually pretty impressed with that step. Now, what do you guys think about this system? Is there something that you dislike here? Um, with something that I did or the conductor sizing or something, please let me know down below. Pretty much everything is oversized, so I don't have any issues, but if you're building this at home, be sure to size all these conductors properly, especially when you expand the system 
over time. That can cause problems. So think about the entire system when you're doing that. So I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.